Hello, here is an AID game that white won by three and a half, so very close. The beginning was super balanced, and actually in the opening, uh, black was slightly ahead. But at some point during the middle game, white managed to turn the tables around and uh, keep a small lead till the end. So let's see what could have been done better. First of all, uh, we have a parallel Fuseki, low approach, very modern, tight base, that's good. White attacks the top. Now this extension, 3 space jump, uh, it's no longer uh, very popular because it leaves the invasion at N17, which is going to happen later. Or black can simply put pressure at O16 and then uh, uh, develop a big moy on the right side. So here, white can either think about the 2 space jump base, which is uh, tight and solid, or simply ignore and go for the R5 or R6 um, lower right corner approach. This would be a way to speed up the Fuseki for white. So white is actually playing old school the three space uh, extension. Then black goes for the Shimari, this is very big. Also for white it's very big to extend K3 because that's exactly the direction of play uh, for black next. Nice to attack the top left corner. So the Fuseki it's extremely balanced. And now uh, this is a fine move, very modern and locally is uh, the first choice for black. But if you look all over the board, it's interesting for black to consider an extension on the right side, like Q10. Because this will uh, pretty much connect uh, the whole right side and look for a Moyo. Of course, for black it's also important to extend at M3, and this will come later. But another option is to put pressure at O16, then no B, and now extend on the right side at Q10. If white plays a move like N16, uh, sorry, N17 in the top, for black it's important to go attach at L16, because if black just extends at Q10, white is very happy with the tiger mount. But when this happens, white can ignore completely and invade the right side, Q10 or R10, and then black will just profit a little bit in the top with the cover, which makes uh, uh, white gote to live in the top corner, then continue in the top left corner, sun sun invasion, attach, or attack on the right. So this is an option to think about the moy on the right side, so either preparation with the shoulder hit or simply extend to Q10. Now when you play a move like Q10 to connect the right side, white might just go N3 and then you can put pressure at O16 to increase the moyo and come towards the center. So this could be an option for black in Fuseki to focus on the moyo. <clears throat> but C16 is also a very big point. So far so good. The thing is, on the left side, black uh, might end up uh, got it. So yeah, white will push here. If white goes down, Black still needs a move on the left side, either C12 or push at D14. But it's good for white to push at D14 because white has the extension at L17. So this way, white can think about growing a moyo in the top side. But for white, it's actually very big to invade at R10, which I guess he did. Yeah, this is fine. But the follow-up next is very good for black too. So black attacks at R12, which is nice because if he doesn't, if black plays a move like R8, White is very happy to extend R13, and now the two stones in the corner, they need some help. Therefore, black will need a kick and descend. And if this happens, white also gets to extend on the bottom side. So in this case, white will get both the right and the, bot, uh, uh, the bottom extension, which is uh, like taking two big uh, Fuseki points. But instead, black attacks at R12, so this already uh, helps the R16 corner. Now, white is forced to get a base at R7 towards black Shimari, and this way black induces the extension at M3. So this is an excellent sequence. Approach from the top in order to extend on the bottom. This is called inducing moves, and it's very good to use them. So now when uh, black extends M3, which is still an ideal extension from the lower right Shimari, white is supposed to uh, be a little bit worried about the invasion around G3 or H3, so for white it's interesting to jump at k5, but before he does that, white can play a pressing move at d6 and then an obi or an attach to keep black low on the left side and then extend uh, up towards the center at k5 or think about a way to expand the top moyo, for example this schema. This schema prevents uh, black shoulder hit at o uh, o16 <clears throat> or push again on the left side like this in order to uh, grow the top. Or simply jump, maybe L15. So there are many interesting moves to consider already for white. But white played a move that's very slack, this G3. 
If he really wants to uh, secure the bottom, it's interesting to play h4 because the position is strong enough. So why not go on the fourth line and build some more? But playing these kind of moves will grow the box towards the center. So it's much bigger for white. When white played g3, now uh, black is uh, getting a slight edge in the Fuseki. So yeah, it's very big to play this move. It's also very big to capture the top left corner right away. Usually white will go down, then you descend, then capture the two stones. It's nice to capture them because it um, prepares some way to get inside the Moya after that. But this shoulder hit is also a nice idea. Even though uh, when you set up a wall in this area, it's not going to affect the center so much because white is also strong and can jump in the middle. But yeah, not a bad idea to put pressure. Also, a fine idea would be to take away the base like this. And now put white a little bit on the run, then attack from the center. This way, you take territory on the side and white has to run out. And on the way out, you might get some stones that will affect the top moya. Anyway, good idea to play Q8. But the follow-up here was a little bit strange. This attach is good too. <clears throat> now, normally on this attach, white can play the wedge or simply push. If white pushes and hane, black can use the double hane. Now, if white captures one stone, you're happy to give that out and push through to separate the other two stones. And in the top of the two stones, you either cover to connect or you play a shoulder hit. So this is already a good trade for uh, black. It's not going to happen. I mean, if white pushes and hane, double hane, white will connect, black can connect, and white still needs to turn and go into the center to fix his group. This is similar to what could happen in the actual game. So white turns first. Now here, black has several options to consider. Simply pull back, uh, it's a little bit soft. Normally, you just play Q9, or you can play the wedge, then white will go Atari, connect, then white has a problem at S10. But instead of connecting S10 to allow this move, white will push, then Hane. But again, double Hane works. So white needs to connect, and black defends. Now, it's not interesting to have this exchange played, the push uh, to give white eye shape. That's why it's better to connect solid. Because now when white plays the push, Hane, double Hane, connect, and you connect, you're not going to push later at R9 to give him eye shape, but you keep S9 to take away the eyes. So in this case, it's nice to connect solid, not the wedge. Because in general, you want to wedge and create cutting points. But in this case, when you play the wedge and create those two cutting points, it also helps white for eye shape. So just connect. And another option is to bump R11. If white plays Atari here, you can go up, <clears throat> and white is fine, but uh, still kind of over-concentrated, or you can play Atari under. Now, if white connects, the shape is very uh, over-concentrated. All this formation to capture one stone, and then black can still go up uh, in order to put pressure on the group, then press the top and set up the moyo again. So the bump is an option, and on this Atari, white can play with fighting spirit. Counter Atari, then black captures Ponuki, White takes a stone, black will block, white goes in the middle, but black profits a lot on the right side. And then being strong, it's good to invade the top now. So these are the options for the right side. But the pullback seems a little bit uh, slack. Because here, if white plays <coughs> the Atari to go out with the group, then there is no real impact on the group anymore. I mean, there's nothing black can do to attack this group, so black has to play away. Anyway, the game is still balanced and close. But why didn't capture the stone? Just Kosumi. So here, uh, black can play away. Yeah, this turn is very big. Nice move, and it prepares a capture at D17. So normally on the turn, white should just go down. It's very safe and powerful. Uh, white plays a shoulder hit. Yeah, this is an interesting move too. And here, uh, black is a little bit submissive with the block. It's more interesting to push. Then if white nobi, you push one more time. And if white nobi again, just Keima to connect. Because... All these pushes here, they break the line between white bottom stone and left side. So there is an imaginary line here. And you don't let uh, white connect too easy to the bottom. I mean, the idea is that white can connect on this kind of diagonal more or less. So you want to break that line. And when you push here and white jumps, you can wedge Atari connect. And then even if white plays some kind of uh, artistic connection here, you can still connect on the left side with a one space jump. But now it's interesting to separate the middle stones from the top. But anyway, they are also separated from the bottom. 
So this group, even if it's light, it still has to run in the middle. And if white breaks the side like this, it's not such a big deal because both the group in the corner and the group in the lower side, they are fine. They can leave, jump out, and there are not so many points to really focus in this area on the left side. I mean, it's something like <clears throat> 10 points, but uh, you get more if you come into the center. So this was a little bit submissive for black, just to protect. For example, now, instead of connecting here, the base is already safe enough, so it's more interesting to go out. Because even if white turns to destroy those points, you come out and this group is on the run. So what you're actually losing here, it's like four or five points, but the group is on the run. So you can get compensation in the top or reduce the bottom. And of course, still attack the middle group. It's a much better deal for black. This was just exactly what uh, white wanted. So if white plays here and then he connects this line, then all of a sudden he's making a nice potential in the middle for those few points uh, black kept secure on the left side. So here is the uh, point where black should show some fighting spirit. Come out with Kema, jump in the middle. So the idea is to break white's uh, connection lines in the top and the bottom. It's a concept to think about. This kick, it's a little bit uh, strange and slack. I mean, it's good for the points in the corner, but if black simply comes out, now white three stones on the left side, they start to look bad. And then white needs to do something to try to connect them. So it's not really appropriate for white to play that. For white, it's interesting to play here. And then maybe jump out or put some pressure on the bottom side. <clears throat> To create a nice moil. So black turns. Uh, for black it's interesting to play Keima though. This Keima is getting ahead of the three stones. So white needs to jump out. And then simply descend in the lower left. Because from the descent you can jump B3. And the Keima with the descent they are already connected. Because when you just play Nobi here. The Nobi doesn't affect the bottom anymore. So white can still jump out. The turn was a little bit shy. Also it's still okay to jump here. Because from this jump. You're thinking about the invasion in the top of J17, followed by the invasion at N17. So the invasion at J17 already attacks White's group. And also the jump, it's affecting the other three stones in the middle. So White has to decide whether he defends the top and or jumps in the center to save the three stones. The turn just pushes White ahead. And in the end, you're not going to build too much on the left because White is strong in the lower side. Ah, just Atari. Well, white can still go down here and get more forcing moves. So when white plays here, black can turn, white blocks, black captures. Then white should jump somehow to protect against the vital point hit. But white can also play e18 and then Atari. So he maximizes the uh, profit or the potential in the top. <clears throat> Just Atari is good to capture directly. The thing is, if white plays Atari here, black doesn't care. And if white plays a move like this, the uh, end game will be different. So the follow up is nice for black locally. Mm, this slide it's a little bit slow. So black doesn't have to answer. Push is good. For white it's more interesting to play this kind of move. So when black pushes, either pull back or block and on the cut, capture. Playing here, uh, white, black has this kind of move to force an empty triangle like this or like this. So white shape kind of suffers. Black jumps, that's good. This prepares uh, F15. So white normally should play here. But then this move will follow and then the Kema. So white it's on the run. Mm, this push it's a little bit slow. The proper move would be to defend uh, the top left corner. This move it's a move that uh, black can ignore. So for example, if black plays here or the invasion at J16, sorry, J17, when white Hane, you just cover and connect. So you have a very powerful wall. You lose a few points here, but white it's about to lose more in the top. Because this invasion it's really uh, going to be severe on uh, white. Also, if you block, you can block directly at S13. Because when white cuts, you have Atari from above, then you push under. And the stones are captured in a net. So the cut is not a problem. You don't have to no-be and allow white go out. <clears throat> you can Atari first and then catch. Therefore, the block works. Uh, and of course, if white plays here, you just connect. If white connects under, you don't care. Invade the top. 
So this was a little bit slack for Black to answer all these moves, become over concentrated instead of uh, taking the upper hand and attack the top. That's where um, White uh, got away with some overplays. Now this move, it's also a little bit uh, slow right now. White should, I mean, the proper move for White is to defend the top because the invasions there will hurt. So Black plays the key point, that's very good. <clears throat> and now black goes for four stones, but that's actually uh, a little bit slow right now. It's more important to invade the top right away. The thing is, when black plays here to catch four stones, which are eight plus one, nine points, white can defend the top, give up the four, then play an Atari, so in the end it will be eight points, and then play another big point. Uh, maybe something in the top to prevent the invasion. So white can profit more keeping the top safe, than trying to connect the four stones but q players in general they don't want to leave any stones behind so they want to save everything and that's how the large dragons can die later on so good idea to put pressure here uh actually j17 is still a nice invasion point then go up nobi again and invade n17 <clears throat> even if the group in the top can come out uh, the result is very good for black so this is not too bad. Attach. Yeah, the idea was that if white cuts, black cuts, white captures a stone, Atari, connect, and then kill the tail. So, of course, white will push and cut the other way. Actually, white can cut here now. Then Atari, go out, connect, and capture the stone. Either like this, or with a honey. Well, here black can push again, and then invade. <clears throat> anyway, for black, this is good, because black compensates by uh, damaging the top and white still needs to live here so white plays the bump black no b white pushes and this is where black made a mistake uh, obviously black wants to keep the pressure on the group but to simply get ahead it doesn't matter if white pushes here and then captures one stone this group will live very small so okay it's one two three four points life but going up staying ahead and then surround the group uh, also <clears throat> protects against the cut at j16 so white cannot cut here let's see the ladder Hope I read it right. Oops, misclick. Oh, not like this. Atari. Yeah, it goes into the black stone, so it's fine. <clears throat> All good. So there is no cut for wider. Let's delete this branch. Okay, back here. So once the group is surrounded, white has to leave, then black can invade the top. And now when white tries to connect under with N7, uh, sorry, N18, you just separate. So white's group in the top. It's actually full of cuts and no ice. <clears throat> so if something like this happens, it's really terrible. Let's see the actual game. The problem is, when you connect here, it means you are afraid of the cut J16, but in order to protect the cut indirectly, just no B. So when this move is played, white will sting and simply come out. That's usually uh, nice for white to go out between the groups like that. So black is losing the attack here all of a sudden. Now the game becomes kind of close again. And this move is not necessary. The group is out already, so you gotta let it go. You better play a Kema, let white uh, come out again, then invade the top and try to compensate uh, in that area. The attack, it's kind of finished now. Here white should play uh, M16 or N16, because this is an ideal shape. And when black comes out, white goes out to connect. If black attacks from this side, it can be dangerous for the top stones. So anyway, white is going to escape, but now maybe even kill some stones in the process. So this way, black can still invade. And now black again is doing fine. But the push, it's not enough. Should cut one way or the other. If you just cut M18 and white pulls back and then you connect, the position in the top is strong. This stone, it's kind of surrounded. And the group in the corner, it still needs Osumi to stay safe. Now, if white cuts, you capture stone, Atari, connect, cover, you can push once, threatening to separate, then white pulls back, then you connect under to stay alive, and now white has many cutting points, so he will probably protect here, but still, the entire group is under attack, so, okay, if you cut here, he will give two stones, therefore, you can go for peep, and then try to surround everything, and kill the whole group. So, it's either the cut at M18, <clears throat> or the cut at 018 then catch like this 
If I tarry here, uh, yeah, you can take the stone. Oh, that's painful. And this cut works too. So the push was a little bit soft. Because this way, uh, black can make some power in the center or some influence, but white can still reduce it coming from the left. And this kind of move is wishful thinking, and it happened to work fine, because white was uh, cooperant, but if white goes up and black separates one stone, then white captures three stones, this is a good deal for white, because this one stone with a few points of territory are smaller than the three stones. Besides, once white takes the three stones, the group in the top is in trouble too. So why should play with fighting spirit here? This was too kind. Just connect and allow um, black to link. But it's difficult to use this influence. I mean, here black is making all that potential, but white can come up from the left. And then it was useless to uh, give up everything in the top. Therefore, if we go back here, black should cut one way or the other. This is the fighting spirit, the proper way, actually. Uh, this move is not necessarily sente, but white answered anyway. It looks like endgame. Right now, I think black should uh, maybe consider this and attach. But now it's, it's really close again. And also the hane, uh, it's a move that black could, I mean white could ignore. So let's say, I don't know, peep here. So there's a push and cut, some preparation. Okay, then attach. The thing is, if uh, white ignores, let's say white plays the peep like this, then what else? An invasion here. Uh, black will catch one stone, but white simply goes down and the group is still alive. So black's profit here is just to take this stone, which is not that big. It's like three points. But first, the Han at T18 was gotte, and the invasion at O3, it's much bigger. So white is alive, even if he doesn't react to that move. So this was not necessary. <clears throat> okay, maybe white felt confident. This attach is good. Actually here, just pull back. White will go up, then cramp. If white blocks, Atari, connect. And the position on the bottom is much stronger. Then Nobi here or Kosumi. Because like this, it's much tougher for white to invade. It will just cap. And the group on the right side is in trouble. <clears throat> on this move, usually white will bump. Then you go up. But here, white played very uh, active. The invasion, which is also fine. Because if you try to surround this invasion somehow um, on the way out, white can catch that stone. Not good. So Kosumi, yeah, and simply connect to the top. That's fine. And for uh, white, instead of this move, it's very good to play the push because black can bump in center pretty much any time. And this push will give black a terrible shape. If black covers, white can link under. If black connects here, it's an empty triangle anyway. And even if white doesn't link under, it's already a gain. White will link uh, on the right. So why should make this exchange at L3 <clears throat> to see how black reacts. So now the game is still extremely close. Turn and bump, very good. White has to go down. Then jump, time to build something in the center. True story. Uh, but this jump, it's a little bit better. Because it kind of encloses the box here. But white was really good to jump at M13. So somehow, white managed to build more points in the center than black, even though black had the bigger potential, in appearance at least. So white is making points everywhere. Yeah, this is big. If black pushes here, white can play this one, threatening the cut. So it's very painful to connect. Ay ay ay. Now, the cut was a little bit too much. You gotta pull back. Oh, actually, black can play Nobi, but white can still use this move to erase a little bit. But the thing is, he's not going to catch the stone in the center, just Atari and then protect against the cuts. So now it's different. When white Hane, <clears throat> he got all these Ataris and captured an important stone. So all of a sudden, white made lots of points here compared to what black built around the wall. And therefore, this is the um, moment where white took the lead. Uh, this is a bit slow. Those stones are fine. It's more interesting to jump here because this can reduce the center. So if white plays a wedge like this, you jump along. And you reduce all the center and the group is still fine. So this feels like a slight neutral point. 
white comes in then the jump didn't reduce that much <clears throat> this attack is good uh push here it's really not necessary better pull back here now that hurts the corner a bit the way to defend the corner is to play s6 and then s4 the much better uh, eye shape and also reduces some points on the right because after you play here here and here if this group it's surrounded and there are no ways to to make eyes on the bottom then you might use the s9 move so playing here white defense and that's pretty much it okay alive instead of this atari white can jump but the jump came a little later and it shouldn't be a monkey jump it's still better to play b7 if white uh, if black blocks why should leave it so, so now on the monkey jump black didn't find the best way to block here because it's a little bit different with c6 in place so there are two options actually even three that black can uh, consider one is to play b7 then cut atari from behind atari again and if white connects you are sent already and if white doesn't connect later you capture two stones he takes one back so that's one option uh, another option to make use of c6 sorry c5 is to push again white needs to connect and then go out because now there's a cutting point at b4 so it's very dangerous for white white might connect b3 or b4 and then you just block uh, b9 so white will push then you block this way it's got it but at least you manage to kill one stone so make some profit in the middle for the points you lose on the side this is because the position you need to adapt the variation to the given situation here and another way is just block uh, <clears throat> a9 so when white plays b7 atari connect so this reverse to the variation where white plays this 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 and connect and of course if white cuts you play atari from behind when white connects atari from behind again if white captures you just connect on the outside and it's uh, a lot of profit and of course if white takes here you just pull back therefore white cannot go inside white needs to pull back and if he pulls back to a7 you block like this and then you have atari atari all the way so white will still play this move or you can push once and when he goes back you can push again or just connect and again we have this kind of follow-up so anyway i suggest b7 like the first uh, move to consider but this one it's possible too even though uh white can think about nobi actually so white pulls back when white pulls back yeah then you block and it's back to the the other option the thing is if white goes in you cannot cut like that and when you play here he will crawl and connect under then when you take this stone uh white can erase more huh? yeah another monkey jump that can be a problem but okay for white it's also important to play here the problem with the cut is that atari and nobi gives black lots of liberties so in order to continue the fight here white needs to play the empty triangle then another block and this can be tricky yeah too many liberties so black will win the semi okay that's greedy so when this happens first things first white will protect then black needs to protect either like this or like this but black loses more points and if black plays away white will play another sort of monkey jump so yeah once again when we go back to this uh b7 will erase more points and also after this black can push first because when white comes in push again then you save this stone and it gives you some points so must pay attention with these monkey jumps oh here in the center uh black can play atari and connect and when white captures towards the end uh white needs to play more moves inside so let's say something like this happens then you have the squeeze and another atari so in the end you make all these points in the middle but white got less so that's how you continue from k9 honey here was big this is not so big for white this is also big uh that honey is not that amazing actually here it's better to push because if white blocks he's not going to make any point and the push gives you some points 
And if white doesn't do anything, let's say white plays here, you push again and connect under. And if he plays Hane in the top, you can play Atari, connect, connect. Anyway, there are no points for white there. And now it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Yeah, white doesn't have to protect yet, but push in center is coming. So this Hane actually gives white two points, and then you can lose the point at E19. So not so great. This is big. But white can immediately Atari to profit more in the top. Because with this Hane and connection in the top, H and J19, black just got neutral points. Ouch. Hane here is good. And the way white should protect is just jump H2. Because when white plays J2, black can continue in center right away. But so in the end, white also finishes with H2. But if white plays H2 right away, and black continues J1, white doesn't have to protect. So now white is center. And this means black doesn't want to keep, uh, I mean, take Gote here with the push. So black will play another point, And this gives white the chance to block here eventually. But when white plays J2, he's uh, committed to play Gote all the way. I mean, he still end up H2. So it's like he plays H2, you push J1, and then he immediately blocks J2, which is actually one point instead of playing a bigger point. This is quite okay. <clears throat> and that's pretty much it. Hmm. Big points in the center. But still not enough. Uh, on the right side, it's better to play a throw-in. Because after white captures, you can play R11, and after all the neutral points are filled, white needs another move inside at S10. That will erase another point. Once he connects here, he makes all these points. 1, 2, 3, 4. But if the throw-in is played, in the end, he only makes these two points. Well, plus the capture. So it's one point less for white. Already the game could have been two points and a half instead of three and a half. Ins ah, you have to block, sorry. No time to Atari. This is not necessary, so Atari. Because anyway, white is not going to cut. He puts himself in Atari. And this is also not necessary. Better play Atari here, then capture a stone. I mean, if white uses Atari here, then Atari here, then Atari like this, you don't have to connect. You just wait, and when he takes a neutral point, so play away, he takes here, then you defend. But for now, you can make the profit. So instead of defending, Atari first destroys one point and captures stone. And if he plays here, you just play away. So how is Atari, Atari, Atari? Oh, this is very tricky. If you connect and he goes, well, if he goes Atari here, you gotta answer. If he goes Atari here, you gotta take. If he takes two stones, that's some profit. But there's a very big co-fight like this. So maybe why should pay attention about this Atari. But the defense was in advance too early. That co is quite big. Yeah, that's small. To play in the top and connect. I mean, when he plays R19, you better play in the top. He blocks, you connect, and when he captures a stone, now you connect. And then he feels the call. Because there's nothing left. So even in the last few moves, the game could have been slightly closer. The way white plays the cotret here is wrong. He should play this one. And then he has another one. Let's see. But yeah, anyway, the Atari was big, so no way to fight that call. It's strange black never played this Atari here. Destroy one point in center and then fill the call. Now white can take that point too. So yeah. If the monkey jump is blocked differently, there are like two points difference here. Then the Atari here it's another point. Then top it can be another point. Phew, this game can end by half a point. But anyway, the problem was uh, in the early middle game stage where black could attack more severe the top left group and damage more in the top and also in the center somehow white managed to build more points than black where black had all the potential so yeah overall pretty good game by both and lots of uh, lessons to take away so enjoy the review